From Hype Beast Radio, I'm Jeff Staple, and this is the Business of Hype, a show about creative entrepreneurs, brand builders, innovators, and the realities behind the dreams they've built. The world of streetwear and fashion is so fickle and fast, right? Everyone wants new, new, new. It's definitely difficult to constantly be fresh and new, but people often forget how much more difficult it is to actually have staying power, longevity, and build a legacy. When you think about the sneaker and streetwear world in particular, there are only a small handful of names that have stood the test of time. And when I say time, I don't mean months or seasons, I mean years and decades. I like to call these people the architects because they're actually building a foundation on which others can stand on. What's even more impressive to me is the small subset of architects who come from a retail background. As you probably have heard, retail is in a constant state of flux. So when a brick and mortar retailer can stand the test of time, it is a hundred times more impressive to me. These select few marquee retailers have helped spread the culture globally, while at the same time connect intimately with their local community. So to kick off our new season of the business of hype, we have two men that have partnered to create a perfect trifecta, local community retailer, culturally relevant storyteller, and global brand legacy. Now, some of you listening might have only heard about this brand recently, but this isn't an overnight success story. This is a dream that's been 15 years in the making. And when we're talking about this industry, that is a damn near lifetime. This week's episode comes straight from Amsterdam, as I have the pleasure of having in the studio the OGs Edson and G from the world-renowned store Pata. What is Pata? It's a family, a store, a brand, a cultural center for some of the dopest work over the past few years. But don't let me tell their story. Let's hear it straight from the Pata guys now. So who do we have in the New York City studio all the way from uh, Amsterdam? This is me. I'm G, co-founder of Pata in Amsterdam. That's who I am. And actually, he's also the co-owner. This is, that's what's up. Co-founder, <laughs> co-owner. <laughs> me, I'm Edson Sabayo, uh, 47 years old, from Amsterdam, born and raised. And we're at your podcast, man. Jeff, let's, let's yeah, get popping. I'm let's excited. Go. Yeah, man. How old are you? I'm 41. Okay. April, I'm turning 42. Proud Aries. You know how we do. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Y'all are, uh, you look great for your age. <laughs> <laughs> that black don't crack. People yeah. already know, right? <laughs> but I think also, like, we, because we work in, like, youth culture, yeah. we mm-hmm. tend to, like, Try to keep a younger facade, right? Like, you know. Nah, not even that. I mean, like, we just go with the flow and uh, we understand that we need uh, young people also in your company and mm-hmm. that the young people also speak if they have their minds yeah. uh, made up and set up. Right. And they keep you young. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Everybody yeah. keeps us young. And, yeah. you know, and we give them a little bit of the old, you know? The it's, it's, it's back yeah. and forth, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's nice. Exactly. So, um, you guys, are, are you both co founders or you're the founder? Both co-founders. Both, co-founders yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so to somebody who doesn't know what Pata is, mm. describe Pata. Mm. To, a total, yeah. to, a, to a total... You I, know, talk, I talk a lot all the time anyway. You know, so I'll, 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 you know, you know like, like when you are you meet a complete stranger at a yeah. party and they're like, yeah. not a sneakerhead, not a hype piece. Like, oh, what, what do you do? What do you do? Like, we, we have like a... How do you call it? It's like a community-driven uh, entrepreneurship. Like, you know, that's mm. what we do. Uh, we started out as a shop, as a, a, a sneaker shop. Mm-hmm. That's how we started. And okay. then we found, and then really realized that, um, you know, we can also sell clothing. Mm-hmm. Then we did some clothing. Mm-hmm. And then everything, what we do is uh, out of passion and out of like, oh, we want to do that? That's, okay, let's try it. Mm-hmm. And let's figure it out. There is no books for our, uh, how do you say that? Um, like an instruction manual. Instruction right. manual. There, if, when we start, there is no instruction manual. And the funny part also, like a couple of years ago, I was at a school in Amsterdam. And they had made, uh, it was like a, a entrepreneur school ship, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. I had to speak. And over there, they had a segment in their book about 
pata, how they started and how they do stuff uh, for the community. Right. And, you know, and, and making business out of it. it really? was Yeah, it was fantastic because I never saw it. They just made wrote it up. It? They wrote about it. I just had the book. I was like, wow, oh, this is not correct. Okay. <laughs> it was dope. <laughs> it was really fun. That's dope. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, w- before you guys started Pata, mm-hmm. what were you guys doing? Um, I was working for a record company. That's just before I started. Uh, started Pata and before that that's kind of where we met and grew up mm-hmm. we worked for Fat Beats mm-hmm. the legendary Fat Beats, Fat Beats. Yeah. Fat Beats. 25 year Fat Beats a lot of people this year this year's 25 this year yeah, 25 yeah. 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 yeah a lot of people came through that shop Man. like from New York Los yep. Angeles mm-hmm. Tokyo you know all yeah. the spots where they've been it's been a foundation for us for real mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so what were you doing there well, I was just a shop clerk. Edson was doing management wow. together with two yeah, other guys. Yeah, yeah. Like one of them is actually here too uh-huh. this time because oh, he's SP, playing yeah. SP. Right. And I was just working in the shop. I was one of the younger guys, you know. Yeah. Like so, I, I came in. I had to. I right. had to do a lot of shit. You know <laughs> well, I, mean? I want to explain because a lot of the people listening to this, mm. a probably don't know what Fat Beats is, oh, yeah. Yeah. but probably don't even know. That there was a store that just sold vinyl records. Just mm. vinyl. And <laughs> vinyl. And they First were so, labeled so at the same Google time. Google Vinyl Records, you know, so you crazy. know what that is. And yeah. then Google Fat Beats because yeah. it was a, a mecca of uh, underground culture. You know what the funny culture. thing is, though, Jeff? Mm. I just recently read an article that vinyl surpassed CDs. That's facts. Like, like, yes. You know, like, so, so it's actually, on the rise. It's yeah. on the rise again, you know what I on mean? On some so, like retro for shit. For real, yeah. though. On some retro shit and people just, yeah, just, Appreciate, just start the appreciation for that type of stuff. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that's... It's actually really cool, but Fat Beats was so important on so many levels. Like, yep. you know how the how the how, how music is right now with uh, like the mainstream and the underground. That that division was really really big back then. Yeah. So yep. so Fat Beats was kind of like 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 one of the the the, the, the gatekeepers of like that absolutely left field boom bap hip hop yeah. nerdy hip hop shit. You know what I mean? Conscious hip hop. Yeah, yeah, everything. <laughs> Backpack, backpacker, like, backpacker, hip, yeah, all that. So that New York street. But like, also, you know, yeah, like, also a lot of styles, styles, and especially in Amsterdam with the because you know I was born and raised in Amsterdam, so mm-hmm. we seen people coming up and people going. Yeah, and um, in that era in the nineties. Like all our guys, we you know, my man Pete Pete Pada came through, like, you know, was there Rockwell. Mm-hmm. We had so many guys that were, had dreams. Yeah. They had dreams. But we was like at the Fat Beats, it was a hangout. There was uh-huh. another place called the Diefel. There was a cafe in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Whenever you go to Amsterdam, check that out. Okay. That's, it's still there. It's still there okay. since since ninety two. Uh-huh. We've been there, only playing hip hop. So everybody came true and then, you know, we had all these dreams and uh, let's say 80% of our friends, they went into businesses. Yeah. Like there was some guys, they did like game shows. But like, yeah, but, but the it was, the, yeah, there. the roots was there. Yeah. Fab Beats and the Dial for, of course, Paradiso and all of that. I want to, this is something that I was going to ask later, yeah. but like, since we're talking about the subject, do you feel like that roots physical location, that clubhouse where people go to, mm-hmm. do you think kids, because you have, you have a teenage Kid, right yeah. like do you think they're missing that now because of social media or is it harder to find it's there it's, it's still there. there we now have like say with Bona and with the uh, with the yeah, we have a, like like uh so so we moved uh, from our original location on the new side forward hall where we were in amsterdam we moved to the say dyke which is in the red light district mm-hmm. we were one of the first one in that street now uh, fast forward a couple of years later we have like all like stussy is there mm-hmm. and these young kids that we kind of do a lot of stuff with before, like that we use them as models, oh, yes. they do parties and all this, like a young group of creative kids. Yeah. And they open up their own shop, like oh, say like so 60, they have their and own they have brand. like yeah, label yeah, yeah. brands and stuff like that. And that stuff is popping. So, yeah. so they bring a lot of new energy. And then with yeah. the young kids that work in our store, they kind of have like their own hub, you mm-hmm. know? And it's really good because they see us as a examples, mm-hmm. of course, because, you know, two black guys, mm-hmm. independent, yeah. no uh, investors. Right. Doing stuff. They're right. like, wow. And, you know, so they're doing themselves too. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's very... Nice to see that grow. And they, you know, we take advice from them, but they always take advice from us. So right. Go we just grow way. as one group. Actually, they probably, a couple of those guys are here now also at the pop-up store. They're coming through mm-hmm. just to see how that vibe is going. <laughs> so it's really nice to have that as a community right. from Amsterdam, you know, worldwide, coming over here and, and do it. Yeah, it's nice. And it's so, it's because it's basically when we started Pata, you know, it was a hobby. Mm-hmm. 
everything that we do was a hobby and it mm-hmm. turned into a business. Yeah. So, I, and I'm that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm so, we same. started with the two of us. We started Pata, the two of us, yeah. right here. Yeah. Like, as an idea. Right. Like, yo, let's get some shoes. That's it. Okay. We, let's get some <laughs> shoes. That, and basically. Wait, let's get some shoes okay. to sell? To yeah, sell. To okay. Because yeah. normally what we did, we because <laughs> with the whole Fabies, and but also, like, you know, going to New York or, you know, mm-hmm. going to the boroughs and yep. picking up shoes for yourself. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, you know what? Let's do that for, the, for, for people. But yeah. then. If we buy 24 pairs at a shop, let's say in Fulton or in Jamaica Ave mm-hmm. or whatever, then two pairs is one size 10 and one size nine is for me and for him <laughs> and the rest that we sell. Yeah. So that's not the hobby just kept on continuing. And so you were literally like filling up bags Yo, with bags, shoes and taking shoes, it back. Shoes, everything. Yo, my dude. The first, the first shipment <laughs> was just post office. Took yeah. months to come back to Amsterdam <laughs> for real. Yeah. Then the other stuff, we just took a lot of stuff just in like duffel bags, duffel body yeah. bags is how yeah. we call yeah, them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Full of sneakers. We 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 broke up the boxes, flatten the shoes, them. flatten them, and throw that and trick, boom, yeah. and then just take it back home. Re, re, and, rebuild the box. Yep. yep. And the funny thing about that too is like, and that's the learning curve, and that's kind of what we touched up on in the beginning when we started talking about like, yo, mm-hmm. this is not there's no manual to doing that mm-hmm. stuff. Is that in the beginning you go in that with some bravado and some like, yo, man, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna bring the heat back. Show them like, yo, man, you put the because you have yourself in, in your mind, you know, you have those Air Force Ones that are all canvas, all black with a white check, and you're like, yo, man, this is so dipping. This is like, this is gonna be it. Yeah. Mm. So you buy all these styles, thinking about yourself and uh-huh. our own specific your taste. Crew, yeah, yeah. And then you start putting it in the store, mm-hmm. and it's just brick. You know what I mean? It's just brick. Like, really? like, yeah, like, yeah, yo, for real. Like, yo, of course, a couple yeah. of shoes like. Some like some Hurachi mitts or some stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. It didn't move for people over mm-hmm. there because people was not into it like that. Like yeah. when you when and they you, weren't seeing what you were seeing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? right. so, and we was very new. So yeah. everybody was new. And you have to understand we had no accounts. Right. So you're buying them at retail. Of course. Retail stores. Yeah, but you know you know how it goes when you go to let's say, let's say uh Fulton, mm-hmm. you have stuff that is on sale that nobody wants yeah. to buy it. And but you can for, negotiate. And for yeah. us it's gold. It's right. really yeah. gold. I was just saying, like, we had an interview le- uh, yesterday. It's like, let's, for instance, say Fulton. We found out that, you know, there was one guy that was running, like, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. My man, Manny, mm-hmm. back his daddy, dude, like, he was running. And then first we bought in the shop. Six months later, we came, and they were like, oh, you're back. Okay, you know what? Let's go to the back. And we went to the back, mm-hmm. bought stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, from the back, go to the wholesaler. Uh-huh. And then we just... You're building your way building up. Building the way up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because we came true, always. Yeah. We always And the only true. way you could do that back then, because there was no DMing people. Nah. Or, like, you had to go yeah, to yeah. Jamaica yeah. and no, Fulton. No, yo, go. Yeah. Go the and funny, The funny thing is, actually, Jeff, it's really funny to see that, actually, we are staying now in, like, Fort Greene. That's where we're staying yeah. at the mm-hmm. moment. And... Every morning when we go into the city, we just walk Decap Avenue, mm-hmm. get the train, get the B train to to Manhattan, mm-hmm. and just close to Fulton, and that whole spot just changed. <laughs> like you know, like the whole like that that era of sneaker buying, like it's kind of pushed out. You know, yeah, so many yeah. is in Queens or in Long Island. That's mm-hmm. what I hear. Like yo, mm-hmm. like well, it, it happened, ain't like that no more. Yeah, but look at look at what happened. Like the brands, like the Nikes and Adis of the world. Mm-hmm notice that like oh why are people going to other countries True. and then bringing it to their country mm-hmm. like maybe we should level yeah. the playing yeah. field yeah. yeah you know so like and that kind of pushed out all those guys it also yeah. forced guys like us to actually open accounts and not do this parallel yeah. shit anymore. but the opening account was for us it was uh, different because we made a lot of noise from out of amsterdam mm-hmm. so you got to understand that the sales rep from holland yeah they were like saying to their bosses in New York or in Tokyo or whatever, saying like, nah, don't worry. Uh-huh. That's not going to make it. Mm-hmm. You know, two black kids. What, what do they know? Et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> yeah. basically. But after like three, three years, uh-huh. they're like, yo, this, this shit's fabulous. So yeah. then first we came, fix this. Yeah, we got we- to gotta fix this <laughs> shit. And then that's why uh, they came and we were sitting on the other side of the table. Mm-hmm. Right. So you had the negotiation power. There you go. Right. And that was, so that was like about three years of you guys continuously traveling the world, what bringing shoes in. Oh, something like that. Yeah. You know what? It's, I think it's like around two, three years. Then the interest started, started mm-hmm. popping from the other brands, you yeah. know? The original flippers. 
all before today's multi-billion dollar resale market, before the stock X is stadium goods and goats of the world, before round two flight club and urban necessities. Reselling wasn't just a means to stack serious cash, it was an entrepreneurial way to spread the culture organically. Forget about G and Edson's travel from Amsterdam to New York. Hell, even in the US, you couldn't get everything a brand made. So people would have to drive up and down the East Coast to get an Air Force One specific to, let's say, Baltimore, or New York City. Now, for those unfamiliar with how a lot of today's sneaker craze was built, a major part of the foundation happened in the late 90s and early 2000s when people realized there are sneaker models and colorways that only existed in certain countries and certain cities. Oftentimes, just sitting in a random local sporting goods store or a mom and pop shop. The way G and Edson would gather kicks from different cities and fly them back to Amsterdam was how a lot of the historic stores started. They went to the States, other people went to Japan, but this phenomenon was global and yet very much underground. There was a lot of semi-corrupt shit that was happening in order to get these kicks from all around the world. Palms had to be greased, warehouses had to be broken into, customs officers had to look the other way. It was real in those days. I remember when I dabbled in these activities too. One of the tricks was that in order for you to sell a shoe from overseas, you needed the box and the packaging and the tissue paper all to be pristine. Otherwise, the shoes probably wouldn't sell, right? But packaging takes up a lot of space in your luggage and you can't ship shoes because then that eats up into your profit margins. So the trick was to pack your luggage with the shoes, then disassemble and flat pack the boxes while also delicately folding the tissue paper so that when you got home, you could reassemble everything and make it look like you just magically have these pristine shoes that no one else anywhere had. Now, this activity might seem stupid and ridiculous, but people inside the industry today love to talk about terms like marketing and brand equity and optics and experiential design. Yo, this was all of that and then some. Kids who were doing this back then were basically getting a master's degree in business. But instead of spending the money, we were making it. ASICS was the first one that mm. really was like, because they were also in a different position. They were mm. not Nike or Adidas. Yeah, or they like were the trying big, to fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were like, they were like, they were trying to find out, you mm. know? And mm. we had like specific interests in a couple of models, like, that the gel light tree, for instance, yeah. Yeah. was like a like a classic to right. us, you know? Right. And and it wasn't touched mm -hmm. in that sense. You know, I think Proper did like a really dope, dope, um, dope ASICs back then, but had Tiff really done theirs yet? No. No, no, no. no, no. This, is, this is this is this is this is pre. Okay. That, you know? So so we 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 worked on a on a gel light tree mm -hmm. with quite we didn't really have expectations, you know? So we made like 250 pairs, was only for us. And then, you know, early in internet, that shit blew up, boom! Blew <laughs> People come in for that stuff and that kind of like, like first cemented our A name. Actually, with, with, that, that. with that shoe, when we had the 250 pairs, so you have to understand, everybody from Europe and also from the States came over to buy the shoe. Mm -hmm. But we, because we didn't have an account and we didn't have like a bank loan. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have an ASICS account? Nah, and that, but then we, when, we, when we did that, yeah. we, got, we got it. Yeah, so, just for that. Yeah, yeah for yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. So boom. And then um, there were so many people, but then uh, we sent out like the word to all the radio stations and TV stations, like, uh -huh. look, this is going to be a big. Yeah. But they were like, nah, big? What? I know. <laughs> Sneakers? What the fuck? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. But it was this one guy, let's say at the NY1, but then the Amsterdam version, okay. Arte 5. Okay. And the Arte 5 was an intern. And the intern guy is like, you know what? I will take this assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, so the night before, it was pouring rain. And he was there already. And you see all these kids lined up and people from everywhere. He's like, yo. So he made a, a, a report about it. Yeah. We, we cut a deal with him to mm -hmm. make a report. Mm -hmm. He made it. And there was one guy from Germany. He's like, because the shoe was done. After 250, the shoe was fucking done, mm -hmm. right? And he's mad because he has no shoe. Traveled six hours with the bus, with his friends. So he's fucking mad. And yeah. he's, but the guy, the, the intern, he's like holding the mic to him. He's like, yo, you know, you can go home or you can go to the red light. And the guy was like from Germany. He's like, fuck Pata, 
Fuck them, motherfucker. <laughs> fuck them. Uh, I came all the way. Fuck them. Uh, uh. So right. the guy, the intern, is like, yo, it's just shoes, nigga. Chill the fuck. You know, chill the fuck. He's like, no, 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 no. And then the guy asked him, like, yo, you, you can go to the red light district, mm -hmm. Van Gogh Museum. You can buy the weed. Mm -hmm. What are you stressing for? The guy looked in the camera and left. Mm -hmm. With that tape, we went to the bank. So we had no, we went to straight up. We went to the bank. I put the CD, we went in, we put the CD right on the guy's table. Boom, call me back in an hour. Guy called back in like two hours. And that's how we got like a little bit more money. So we could, that's, no, that was, that was the crazy shit. Because you needed the banker to understand that like kids we are going crazy. I mean, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't explain it to them. When, no. we, when, we, when, we, yeah. when we started it, we went to the bank. We mm -hmm. went to the bank. We're like, yo, we need a loan because we need to, we need to, we need to have a, a location. Mm -hmm. We need to do a store fit. We need to have product, you know. Yeah. And they were basically like, "What is this idea?" You know, yeah. like there are no stores. Accounts? There are no stores. accounts. You're gonna fly around yeah. the world, buy shoes, that, like you know, that's that, that's not gonna work. That's you not know? gonna so work. <laughs> they didn't give, come up with the money. Luckily, a dad of a friend of us, yeah. he lo he loaned us the money. Uh -huh. So that's how we kind of started. Yeah. Actually, yeah, so. uh, we was uh, we we had like a let's say. For like a hundred thousand, or for like a eighty thousand. Then we went to, to our friend, mm -hmm. his dad. The next day, we was crying at the dialful at the cafe. We was crying, and the guy walked in, and uh, he's like, "Yo, uh, my dad is in the pharmaceutical business. Uh -huh. uh, maybe because we were really close. It's like family. Yeah. You got to understand, nineties, all people." And he's like, "Yo, okay." So the next day, we went to uh, Belgium mm -hmm. to the dad, and then we put the amount like we needed this. Uh -huh. Dad was like, "No, nah, I don't have that, but I can give you the half of it." We're like, "Fuck it, let's go." Because we had mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we had half of the was money. That, was that considered like um, just an angel loan? Like there, he wasn't like, I need a percentage of pata. He was just like, no, I'm just going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like no, an yeah, angel, yeah, yeah, yeah. angel, angel yeah, loan. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Amazing. Exactly. He's yeah. like, yo, yeah. you know, this is like, this is like mano a mano. He's like, yo, yeah. come on. Like, I'm going to lend this to you. And yeah. I hopefully we respect each other. <laughs> and, you know, you, you guys pay me back. Did yeah. he believe in the vision? I think he believed that we were passionate about something. Right. Yeah. He, we believed that we, the way we talked about it, and we believed that, yo, this is yeah. something that can work mm -hmm. for us, you know, because there's nothing like it. Yeah. yeah. And I think he's like, you know, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. it, it touches each other, whatever you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. So, yeah. So if, if somebody sees that spark and he's like, yo, and then believe in it, then he was like, yo, let's give yeah, these guys good. a break. Yeah. Right. And plus we was really tight with his son. But we didn't know about his dad. Yeah. We didn't know. Did you have to give the son a job? <laughs> no. The son was, no, he's not interested. It's good. It's, it, the funny thing the son about it was like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna ask my dad. You guys can have a talk with him, but I'm out, outside. He was outside. He was outside. I don't want to have no interference, nothing. You know what I mean? That's the type of friend. Hustle is a truly universal language. The entrepreneurial spirit connects people from all different cultures and walks of life. Whether you've owned your own huge business or just started one, we all inherently know the work that's required to do what it takes. It's almost like the actual product or output is irrelevant. Smart people know that if you put in the time, hustle, and passion, almost anything is possible. If you ever watch Shark Tank, you'll often hear a shark saying, I don't like this idea, but I love you. I'm investing. By the way, this also holds true if you're seeking your dream career or prepping for a job interview. Show your passion for the company and the work and be authentic about it, not annoying and thirsty. If you can't be real and true about your enthusiasm for the job, guess what? Keep looking. It's not the right job. But when you find that outlet, it's important that the people around you can feel that. We can't read your mind. We can't see the excitement or preparation that you're putting in unless you actually bring it out. This goes from the energy to your spirit to your enthusiasm. Hell, it even comes down to little things like your posture and punctuality. You came in three minutes late. I just assume you had more important things to do and this wasn't really a priority. We see it on every single episode of Business of Hype. Each of my guests knows how to talk about their company and vision. They rarely sit back and mumble their way through the story. Now, of course, I'm trying to only bring you listeners the cream of the crop, but it's a lesson. Not only do you need to hone your craft, but you also need to practice the ability to speak about your craft. Pablo Picasso had a friend who was a better artist than him, but we don't know his name. 
Why? Because he never worked on promoting himself. And it don't matter if we're talking about the 1900s or 2020, because like G and Edson, sometimes you just got to bring the videotape to show the non-believers. So after a couple of years, like you said, the brand started to take notice, right? And then they wanted to officially work with you versus you guys doing all this like parallel importing type stuff. Yeah. Um, ASICS was the first one you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you remember when all the other brands started coming on board? Like, I, For Nike, uh, we had one guy was working for us, Bim. Bim Dicker was the sales rep. And then uh, at one point uh, he said, look, yo, there's a big meeting in Paris. Mm -hmm. They're going to talk about something new. We need to go over there and talk. Did you have a Nike account already? No. You didn't have a Nike account? No, no, yet. no, 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 no. no. So, okay, so you were making noise just from selling Nikes from around the world that you were collecting. Everything we sold, everything. Did he ever want you to open? Did he ever come in and say like, you guys need to open an account, man, come on. Yeah, no. there's been, been yeah. talks about it, but okay. it was more also because we kind of wanted to have our independence in the sense <laughs> yeah. that we wanted to keep serving other stuff than the other Stores. retailers yeah. had. Yeah. So you have, you know all the, you know all the politics. I, like, you know, I know, you know the like, politics, but I know, want you, the kid you, to know. You know, you know like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yo, listen, yo, why, do, why, why does he have it? He's just, yeah. One year in the goddamn game, I've been paying my <laughs> bills for 15 years. I got this. I why got does this. he? Why yeah. does he get five colors and I only get two? That's uh, not fair. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So like. You but know, also, that's, when that's you open of... an account, then the, the the account, whether it's Nike or Adidas, starts telling you you got to carry this, this, of or this. Course. And exactly. if you say I want this, they're like, no, you can't have that. Exactly. But you could actually just go on a plane and get it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so you have more freedom. different yeah. stuff, and like so, so, yeah. so we wanted to be smart and have both. Yeah. And like you know, we, yep. we 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 pick what we want from the brand, but at mm -hmm. the same time, we wanted to have the the possibility to yeah. to put our yeah. own yeah. taste. And right. we said like, yo, it's it's actually that's what you would want to. That's what actually what you should want. Mm -hmm. You know, you should yeah. want us to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. and just add on, right? You know? Because right. that's yeah. healthy. Yes. Okay. And that's, and that's how we. Uh, that's how we cut the deal in Paris and the. So wait, okay, so tell you you go to now Paris. We was, we was there. And yeah, then, you and know, then. there was like a whole the board or whatever. Nike was sitting there. I didn't know nobody. And the only <laughs> was Fraser was there, whatever. We sit and then Pim was talking and we was like, okay, you know, if we're gonna do this, and they said, like, okay, there's a new thing coming up. It's called Tier Zero. It's new. And we want you to join the Tier Zero. And, and we was like, okay, if we're gonna join this, we still wanna do the parallel shopping. They're like, go ahead, man. You know what? Really? really? Yeah, of course. That's amazing. Yeah, no, but we was on the, like, well, like, like we said, on we, was on, though, we, guess, was on the, you know? we was on the other side of the table. Yeah. And yeah. they wanted to have us. They couldn't go back to, to their heads mm -hmm. and be like, yeah, we went to the negotiator, but Pata didn't want it. They're like, yo, right. whatever they need, man, let's, right. let's, let's, let's get it. Because there's only one Pata. Like, you know, let's, let's <laughs> you make, can't let's, call the let's, other guy. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Let's make, let's make that happen. So yeah. that was really interesting. And after that, like everybody came and then we, yeah, you know, we started and then we, and then we, then we, then we went. Uh -huh. Funny thing is like, before we started working with, with, with Nike, like in terms of collaborating and stuff like yeah. that. Which I want like to talk about soon. Yeah. Our, our friend Pete, mm. Pete Parra, mm -hmm. he's the one actually that kind of- It's funny, you he, call him Pete, but I yeah. think most Americans think he's called Piet. Really? It's, isn't it P-I-E-T? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. P-I-E-T. No, most Americans are like P-I-E-T, it's Piet. No, it's uh, like Pete. Pete. Like okay, Pete. okay like for those, Peter. I'm, I'm going to translate for them. Yeah. Yeah. This is para. para. That's how yes. we pronounce it. Piet para. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, word? Oh, word? Yes. <laughs> That's some funny shit. We got it. I'm going to use that on the, uh, the mixtape. That's some dope no, shit. No, we got to get him on yo, the show. Yo, yo, get so him. So what we're talking about is Piet Para, Piet. who does the brand Rockwell. Word, 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 word. And does the Para. <laughs> it's, by, it's by Para now. It's by Para now. You changed the name. Okay, so about, about Pete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Pete. Pete. Yeah, so Pete. Like he was, he was starting to to get his name out. Yeah. He started like he was doing like big advertisement mm -hmm. uh, jobs mm -hmm. and, and that type of stuff. So his style was starting to get form, and he was actually he worked on the Amsterdam Air Max mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. that made so much crazy noise, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. And and actually his Nike collaborations and stuff like that from that on have always been infamous, classics. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. super classics, classics, you know. Yeah. So. Again, to 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 state that we did our stuff, mm -hmm. we did the the meetings and had our vision and stuff like that. But our surroundings and our community doing their stuff was always been so essential yeah. for us to like keep pushing. Work. He yeah. he he pushed it somewhere, yeah. and then he took us with us. With us, you yeah. know, he's yeah. like, "Yo, this yeah. my this my boys," my and dude. like you know, so yeah. that's that's kind of the the energy oh, and uh, also of with that the time. with the with the homegrown. 
Same stuff. Yeah. yeah. And the, the, the funny part, we was in one building. So Pete had actually, his office was like, we were sitting right here, Pete was sitting right there. Oh. <laughs> so, you know, especially with the, with the Air Maxes and stuff, yeah. like the Ask to G, like, yo, man, what do you think about this? Called, nah, 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 let's change that. But oh. so we helped on everything right. in, the, in that Just beginning. Flowing ideas. Of course, like this, ideas. Yeah. I mean, you know, and uh, it, was, it was fan. Yeah, good old days, though. Yeah, good days. that's yeah. dope. So you, you're tier zero, which means you get access to this very special product. Yeah. But then when did the phone call come where it was like, let's actually do a shoe together? It doesn't really go like a phone call. I don't know. I really know. <laughs> like, yeah, I, wish, I, wish, I wish it was like <laughs> this that. This is what the kids want to know. They want to know, is it like a phone call, a fax, a you letter? Know, no, like, it's kind of like conversations, right? So you keep going through these meetings in Paris, mm -hmm. you know? So, so they show their new line and like, you know, this is what we're going to be working on for this year and that's what's coming. What mm -hmm. are your ideas about it? Da, da, da. And in these conversations, kind of like, yo... You know, like we are reintroducing the Air Max One, or there's a celebration for the Air Max One, or or our anniversary is coming. And from those conversation kind of yeah. game that we started on, like, okay, guys, but if you have an idea about it, like, what would you what would you do? And <laughs> blah, 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 you know, and yeah. then then that's how it so it's really it like out. organic, quite organic, yeah. yes, yeah. quite organic. Yep. And it's there, and it's not there. You know yeah. what I mean? You can never expect like yo. <laughs> Uh, you think you, you, when you think like, yo, I'm in that position, and I should expect that it's like, no, no. Yeah. That's that's, We've that's, learned that's that. been really, We've really important that. for us. Our independence is, is sacred. And the funny part was also when we did the five year anniversary Air Maxes. Mm -hmm. There were four, right? Mm -hmm. We actually had six. Yeah. <laughs> so it's there, yeah, and then it's six. not there. Yeah, we had six. But and, yeah, and then I find too, in my experience, like mm -hmm. when you really want one to happen no. it doesn't happen it's when no. you least like you're just like huh what yeah. oh really right yeah. now okay let's do it. <laughs> exactly let's go man yeah so that's so the take us back what was the first one uh, the first the nike the that first did? ones officially with the pata name was uh, the air max ones that we did so mm -hmm. the we did the two the two denim ones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The chlorophyll is one called, the other one, I don't know, it's like a purple one. Yeah, the purple. You know, and then we did a black one, mm -hmm. black with a white check. Mm -hmm. That's the third one. And then... The Gucci colorway. The, the Gucci the, yeah, yeah, colorway, colorway yeah, yeah, like yeah, blue, blue, denim, mm -hmm. yeah. green, yep. and then we also, mixed material uh, one. And yeah. then we also had another one with that one, with uh, gray and reddish. Mm. And uh, and a white one with a tape, but they didn't were, make it. It didn't make it. No, no, because they were complaining. So like, I don't say any What, names. that was too much? Yeah, Nike came to us like... Yo, six, huh? You should do two. We're like, nah, we already made an agreement that we, you know, we're gonna do six. They're like, nah, two, two, because of politics. Uh -huh. And then it was like, you know what? Let's meet in the middle. Let's make four. Boom. And then they said, like, okay, they agreed. They came back like after a couple of months and then boom, four. And then when that's, that came out, it was like, yeah, that was dope. <laughs> Air Max One was really hot then. Uh, yeah. So that was the go to shoe kind of You know of what I love us. about all your collaboration projects is like actually the simplicity of them all. You know, mm -hmm. and I, I think I come from that school and like, you know, you look at fragments, collaborations, mm -hmm. they're not like crazy, like over the top mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that just sit on a shelf. They're all like wearable shoes, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it's actually harder, in my opinion, mm -hmm. to make a simple classic that is also hyped mm -hmm. than it is to make like, you know, um, if they put like art all over, like the Paris Dunk, for example, mm -hmm. like that's yeah. artwork. That's yeah, not really course. like a wearable it's shoe. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. But you know what? You guys do, and like you know, it's just always classics. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, like for us, not only we are store owners and etc. etc. Et but we yeah. also are like we love sneakers. You're fans. We're fans. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So we're fans from. So that in mind, we like we can think as a consumer, but mm -hmm. also as a, a store owner. Right. We have like a different hats we have on. Yes. So it's like, all right, let's make it simple. Simple. Okay, you know, couple simple. This a little bit crazy, not too crazy. Yeah. And we know it's gonna bang out. Right. Right. And to take chances, of course, but that's yeah. We that keep we yeah. keep we keep yeah, pushing, keep taking the chances, you know, yeah. because yeah. obviously not everything is a big hit. Mm -hmm. So we 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 kind of try to balance, like, okay, you know what, this is this is Air Max One, or this is a this is a Mephisto. You know, we like mm -hmm. to travel in all yeah. these. Yeah. You know, I the mean, quirkiness is kind of what we are known for. You yes. know what I mean? Like, yep. especially also when the, when the, we did the kangaroos, because mm -hmm. nobody in the whole world was like, "How?" So you you went from Air Maxes, you're going to kangaroo. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. But 
if you do your little bit of research, then you should know that in the late 80s, mm -hmm. kangaroos in Europe, especially in Amsterdam, was the shoe to go. Because mm -hmm. when you was young, your mom would give you change and you would put it in the pocket. Yep, exactly. Me too. And that's what I'm saying. The lunch right? money. Boom, yeah. the lunch money right yeah. there. So for us to, 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 to work with them, and they had like a licensee in um, Permacense, it's mm -hmm. in Germany, so the big license, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. So we went there. So you have to understand now that I like German conservative German people mm -hmm. and we the black you know we're, we're <laughs> coming over there and to make a collab and I think for me personally I've learned the most from that collab because we started from scratch mm -hmm. like we made something from scratch going to the aircraft three days in me G and Tim three days in smoking drinking and come up with a whole mood board and plan and then after that uh -huh. the guys from uh, 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 Kangaroo they were like yo man I didn't expect that that, uh -huh. that came because their, their mind, their whole mindset yeah. was like, what is this? Yeah, they don't think that they way. They don't think that way. No. But then we, we, we got really close with them and we learned that we also made a contract uh -huh. and everything. So like contract with points. <laughs> right. You know, everything yeah. like so. Royalty. We, royalties, yeah, everything. Yeah. But we learned from that collab. Got you. And from that on, we just moved on, of course. Because right. it was two different worlds collide. Yeah. And just building something from scratch. I right. think that for me personally, was one of the most beautiful things. And then also, when we came in, they had this kangaroo logo. First thing we said, like, this shit needs to get the fuck out. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand, like, yo, their main thing is right. to get off that shoe. Yeah. So it was a whole, and then we had to explain why, and uh, but they believed in the fish, and they're like, right. all right, let's make That's it happen. Dope. So that was, yeah, beautiful. I wanna ask you a two-part question now, because I think on the one hand, some people would argue like, nah, don't fuck around with other brands, just wait until Nike hopefully calls you again to do another collaboration. You can't be dependent, man. That's really quick. Like, yeah. <laughs> Real quick. That's the, exactly what I just touched upon. Like, yeah. yo, you 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 done a successful series of Air Max 1s. Like, then you, when, as soon as you expect, like, all right, let's go on to the next one, man. Right. And then You're there's like, like the, maybe something else is like, at that moment, it's more relevant for mm -hmm. them, which, yeah. I, which is understandable. Yep. But for us, it's like if we if we if we refocus and think about what's really important, it's mm -hmm. about what we kind of want, you know. Right, so right. that is our own product, of course, and stuff that we want to push. Mm -hmm. you know? Obviously, we want to make numbers, we want to sell the shoes, so we do a popular stuff. But as Edson says, like mm -hmm. like collaborations, like Kangaroos or mm -hmm. Mephisto. Mephisto, yeah. Or doing a Clark's Desert track, you know, like you know, right. those those mm. type of those type of choices. Mm -hmm. that's, that's 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 like part of DNA. Right? Yeah, and I actually think the brands like Nike and Adi like secretly like that you do these other random, seemingly random. They things. should, yeah, yeah, because it shows the breadth of your your DNA. Yes. Oh, yeah, you know if. If you just waited around for them, I think they'd be like, yo. <laughs> yeah, if you can fuck out. Yeah, but the, I, you would do that too. I would do the same. Yeah. So everybody would do the same. I mean, like for us also, what G just told, like, especially when we did like, okay, the shoes, shoes, and blah, blah, then we start selling shirts, mm -hmm. you know, pat, clothing. Like, like yeah. clothing, like shirts like with the Pata logo, uh -huh. and that flew out the door. Uh -huh. So then we was like, you know what? Let's start our own clothing line. Mm -hmm. Vince came in, it's like, yo, okay. So, and we didn't know nothing about the whole process of making clothing. <laughs> but we just flew to Portugal because Pete Pada had a had a connect because he was making Rockwell already. Okay. So we flew to Portugal, yep. made a deal, and then we was more like, okay, we make a shirt in two months, we need to have that shirt. Factory is like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like there is process into yeah, it. So yeah. we've learned that. So the first four or five seasons, it didn't went well. Mm -hmm. But then we got to learn about the process about everything. Yeah. After that, boom, flying out. Right. Same, you so know, you had a new but now you're a, a clothing brand too. Yes. Of course, yeah. you know, boom. That's yeah, so just a learning curve, you know, learning. And, and along the way, you know, we, we, we accumulate like a crew of people that we work with closely, mm -hmm. you know, so we, 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 we learn by doing, you yeah. know, so, so, so as, as uh, Edson just said, like uh, one of, one of our, one of our key members, Vincent came in, artistic direction, mm -hmm. uh, creative direction, all that type of stuff made sure that the clothing line started to become healthy and known for like yeah. a lot of the, the graphic um, uh, kind of language mm -hmm. that you know from us, the skull stuff and all yeah. that stuff. That's kind of his DNA. I'm sure you get it by now, but G and Edson are masters of the art of collaboration. Their ability to make something recognizable but subtle is what I love most about them. It doesn't always happen in the sneaker industry. Now, we can go on and on about the amazing drops and our favorite color-ups that they've done, 
I'm sure many of you who are familiar with Pata's work have already done this at one point. If not, Google it, and I'm sure there will be many people saying, oh, they did that? Yep, they did. What's great to hear is what we've learned from the collaboration process. Collaborating isn't about partnering with different brands. It's about collaborating with different people within that brand. Once you're able to break it down and actually see the human element of collaborating, well, that's when the exciting stuff happens. It's the person who gives you a legendary canvas like an Air Max One that starts you out in the right direction, or the person who recognizes your vision and lets you create something from scratch. While Kangaroos and Mephistos aren't household names like Nike, what the Pata guys got out of it is maybe even more valuable, knowledge knowledge on how to really craft something from the beginning and on the actual business process. Constantly moving and working with different partners allows the Pata boys to go way deeper. I know for myself personally, working with various different organizations allows me to be a better creative, a better manager, and a better partner. I'm able to see things from all different angles now. I think there's an inherent human quality to want to stay loyal and sit still. Oh, you know, these people did me well, I'm just going to sit here for a bit. And a bit, in the blink of an eye, becomes years. It actually requires a kick in the ass to be like, okay, you did that, now keep it moving, what's next? That's hard, because what's next is always new. And new means different. And different is harder to do than doing the same thing over and over. I think at the end of the day, that's really what makes for a visionary, someone who is comfortable being uncomfortable. How do you two separate your roles? Like, well, it's what are organic, you guys in you know, charge? It's organic. We, we touch upon everything, kind of, uh -huh. but like, you know, like Ethan is more on the business side. I'm a little bit more on the creative side, and we just cross check yeah. with each other. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's, you know? that's very important. I mean, like, this is like a marriage. <laughs> you gotta understand this is a, like a marriage we like fucking like you spend more time with each other than with your each other and stuff. basically it, it is around you know? the same time I guess you yeah, know yeah, definitely. and it's like you know like how G said it's like organic I, you know I got more pushed in, you know, into the business not that I'm really good at business but I was like fuck it let me just learn and then G is more like on the creative side uh -huh. so you know now we started the two of us now we have 32 people working with us mm -hmm. instead of for us like you have, we have Leo over here. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? We just got him in as a heavy weight. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's very important to have people that we trust mm -hmm. and do what they are best at. And we, let's say our board that's like consists of like eight or nine people uh -huh. are no yes men. Right. So everybody has like, we have a, a lot of discussions, voice. yeah, yeah. voices and, and stuff to do. They even can decide if it's good for the, it's not about me and G, mm -hmm. it's about the brand Pata and push that further. Yeah. So that's why we have the Pata stores mm -hmm. now, uh, Pata clothing, Pata running team, Pata foundation we just started and the Pata sound system, mm -hmm. which we do organize stuff and, and do stuff. Yeah. And everything is like organically built. Mm -hmm. It's always an everyday thing, you know. It's like kind of living on the edge because, as as said, we are mm -hmm. uh, we are independent, so mm -hmm. we do it ourselves. So What's every every choice we make, every yeah. direction we go, yeah. every every shoe collaboration that works or fails is right on our own conto. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what's the uh, out of the the empire that you have now? What's mm -hmm. The biggest challenges you find like what are those hurdles that like always i see it as, i see it as a walking on a stair always okay so so on a stair right you you if you if you if you literally look at how a stair works you you grow uh -huh. it goes fast boom then you reach a plateau uh-huh on that plateau you have to do investment new people that have to work for you right new direction what are you going to do new website da, 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 da. yeah on this investment plateau mm -hmm. you do all this stuff to get to the next, the, one. Yeah. Next, the next yeah, one, next and one, and then you go yeah. there again. So yeah. it's a kind of a never-ending story, uh -huh. but at the same time, that's also what what keeps it really yeah. inspiring and interesting and all that. Type and of what stuff. is challenging also is to keep everybody on the same on, on the same boat. Mm -hmm. Jesus, that's yeah, but that's that's you know, I'm just a little bit older, mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to keep it as relaxed as possible mm -hmm. because I know it's going to be a lot of struggles, of course, but. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not about me or about G. Mm -hmm. When I said it's about Pata, and everybody who is involved in Pata know that, and they will go further. And of course, making more money at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. we try. Everybody pushes the harder. Mm -hmm. And you have also the possibility to fail. 
Yeah. yeah. There is not like if you could some, go down those stairs too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, American yeah. culture is way more accepted. Like, mm. you try stuff, then the business doesn't work out, and you just go again. Mm. In the You're Netherlands, there's right. a whole yeah. different culture when it comes to yeah. that. First of all, a lot of people are like, you, 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 you won't stick your head out. Uh-huh. Everybody's trying to be on like the, right. that medium ground. First like of all, just, yeah. Just, yeah. you know. So failing is more like yo. You, when you fail, it's like oh, look at them. Like oh, it didn't work. Uh, you know. So so it's really. And here, failing is like all right. He failed, so at least he tried stuff. So yeah. he knows yeah. some yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's a it's a different way of looking at a yeah, lot of things. Yeah, different. So that's what we do. We try to look at it different. And also, like in the team, you can fail, and it's not about okay. He failed. No, we all fail. Mm-hmm. Because it's a team. Yeah, yeah. It's not one individual. Right. So everybody. So if if somebody takes credit for something, they're like, ah, you take credit, but it's it's a team effort. Because yeah. if we didn't have the guy who sweep who sweep the floors in the store, you cannot do yeah. your work. Right. So everybody is it's very equally important. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Right there. And if you understand that and bring that message out, then you get the people on board. It's not about, like I said, it's not about me or him. It's about the team effort. That's why we call Team Pata. That's not a joke. It's right. not like when you see Team Pata, you'd be like, oh shit, no, it's, they made it's a, a team. team. Yeah. team. Nah. <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you come to us, you will notice that it's actually team effort. Mm-hmm. So that's why now, like when we had Lee on board, he's not like, damn, this is re- this is actually a team. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nick. Yo, it's not, this it's is not a, a marketing it's line. It's not right? a marketing. It really is a team. People consider it maybe as a marketing line of, let's say, the Pata got law for all. Some, no, that's our DNA. Mm-hmm. That's well, us. Yeah. We got law for all. Women, what everything. Yeah. Everything we have law for all. And that's, How many years has it been now total from when 15, you founded it? This is the 15th years. year, actually. Yeah. So we started in 2004, and that's when we opened the business, and we're in 2019 now. So this so is 15 you, years. You made the analogy of like the stairs, yes. right? How do you keep climbing stairs for 15 years? Well, you know what the thing is, you have to be interested for yourself. We, uh, well, the thing is, first of all, we have to be motivated, good with each yeah, other yeah. and motivated. You yeah. know, as soon as we look in each other's eyes, and it's like, yo, man, it's 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 like we, for instance, for instance, if our friendship would suffer or anything like that, that would be a moment for me to be like, yo, man, mm. yeah. do whatever we got to do. But if the friendship suffered, that's more important in the end, or our family, or that yeah, type yeah, of yeah, stuff, yeah. simple stuff. Yeah. You know, also the challenges that we just talked about, like having communication, like it's a constant adjustment. Mm-hmm. First of all, we when we started, it was the two of us. That you like this? Yes, I do. <laughs> you like this? No, I don't. All right, cool. Okay. We'll yeah. figure it <laughs> yeah, out. Figure it but out. now all of a sudden, Nine thirty people, people, yeah. Yeah. And, like, people, and some yeah. people have more. Like you know, so yeah. having all those dynamics work, mm-hmm. that's kind of something that's a challenge. You know, yeah, like yeah, find, yeah. finding yeah. ways of. If having that same organic feeling of how our, what our co- company is, yeah. and at the same time have that working mm-hmm. communication structure, right. all that. Type and of I think stuff. sometimes mm-hmm. I've found this being a founder, and you guys are mm-hmm. founders. That mm-hmm. sometimes you have to realize we just need to sit this one back and yeah. let our team have the voice on it. Because yeah. if you keep winning every argument, no, it's, it's not. It's not, not, no, not a no, team no, no, no. Exactly, right, right. there. Right there. Yeah. That's super important. Super I know. important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's re- really hard because it's your, your it's kids. Your thing. You know, like your kids going to school and then, yeah. but then it's a team effort, you know? So yeah. you, also that's, that's, that's kind of what you learn. Was yeah. there ever a point in the last 15 years where you said, maybe we should get off the stairs? Now for me personally, I had one time I had with G that like, I wasn't challenged enough. So I had no, not motivation. How far in? Oh, that, that, that was like, like four years ago or something, I was like, oh, I was wow. in this, yeah, I was in a thing, like, you know, I just like, <laughs> so you're you know, in your feelings. No, I was in my feelings. I was like, yo. Did, did then, you know about this? Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Okay. okay. So, you know, we talked about it and then, uh, you know, he's like, nah, you know, stick. And then I got back on my feet. That's dope. And uh, yeah, so for me, it's very, very Did you important. feel like you just lost like inspiration? Like in the, like the interest, was it? Yeah, I don't know what it was. It was something. So yeah. I couldn't explain it to myself. So I was talking with him. I need to talk gotcha. with him about it. So Was it, um, not to pry no, no, too no, deep, no, but was it like financially driven maybe? No, 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 no. Okay. No, it was more So it's like, really emotional. Yeah, some emotion. But if I had that, so I was like more like, yo, I need to get out of it. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. needs to help me. Yeah. So, Gee, did you ever feel like unplugged from it? Well, there are moments that it's, that it's, that it's, that it's not as easy or that I get like tired of the... Of the, 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 I'm not talkative, let me put it that way. I'm, <laughs> I'm not talkative and, and sometimes there's moments that there need to be talk, a lot uh-huh. of talking, you know, <laughs> and I get 
actually in my head I get tired of it because it's, I get a headache from it too. It's like, in my body, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I yeah. I, it's I, against yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yo, let's just do it. Let's yeah, not yeah. talk, 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 talk. So, but that's the only moments. Most of the time I just like really, I get like really, uh, I'm, I'm a fiery person, you mm -hmm. know? So I'm not like, I'm into sports and that type of stuff. So yeah. losing and all that type of shit. It's like, yo, from, from young age on, First of all, the way I look, my the way the way my, my my parents brought me up is like, yo, my man, listen, you know, you don't have to do two extra steps, but you got to do you. Make sure that you know, whatever you do, you do it right. You put your whole heart in it, and all that type of stuff. corny yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, but it's so important. it works. It works. Yeah. It's so true. It's so yeah. true. So it helped out, and uh, it's it's perfect, man. I mean, like, come on. We started the tour for as a hobby. Look mm -hmm. at us now. We sit in over. This is enjoyable. Every moment is just only joy. Absolutely, it's fantastic. Look and at the us, fact man. that you got thirty people who are living their lives, their lives too. This yeah. thing that you fucking Yo, started. This shit is crazy. Is that bugged out? Do you ever think about like, every time? How? Every time. Every time. For me, yeah, personally, it's just bug the fuck out. If I see somebody walking down the streets with a pata t-shirt or even a pata bag, I'm like, wow. Me too, to this day. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, and, <laughs> if, I, and if I don't have that no more, I need to quit. I 100% agree. If I, if, if, if I, I, yeah. Whenever I see someone wearing yeah. a pigeon, I'm still like, yo, wow, wow, I don't know who yeah. that is. Yeah. He yeah. like gave me money. And the funny part it's is, crazy. he will look at you and be like, what the fuck are you looking at me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had that so many times. They like, kiss me, you know, yeah. even grow. And the funny, also the funny part is that we're not alone doing kids, but also elderly people that growing us with growing mm -hmm. with us mm -hmm. wearing our stuff so our market is really uh white mm -hmm. so that's of white i mean like uh, abroad like how you say that g like just uh, a wide just, range, yeah, wide range. range. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah and as for and the fact that it's worldwide yeah so you have to that's understand the other crazy we, part you know is, yeah. we're in amsterdam mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, Amsterdam. <laughs> we are not even a key city. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It's a dope city. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but you it's know what I'm trying city, to say. Yeah. But when we go to, let's say, Asia or like, you know, like we just, Indonesia, people love us over there. It's like, wow. Mm -hmm. Internet, man. I love that <laughs> shit. You know? Yeah. So get it. Speaking of that, um, you, have, you have kids now and it's like, when you, and I'm sure you meet a lot of young kids who are such fans and they want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. When they say, I want to start a brand, I want to start a shop, what advice do you give them? Knowledge of self, that's for me very oh, important. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's easily nowadays, like with the information age, to get your identity from a lot of places and a lot of stuff. So it's, it's, it's really important. Who are you? What mm -hmm. am I going to, what am I going to bring into the world? Yeah. All these, all these like, yo, do we need another brand? Do we need more t-shirts? Do we need more, like all that type of stuff, mm -hmm. materialistic stuff, consumption, all that type of stuff. So if you find out that you want to bring something that's important to yourself, that's something that's worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what you can bring to the people. That's yeah. what you can bring to the world. That's what you can do. So that's what it is. If you, if you know that, you know what you're doing yourself and what you want to do, then, it's, then you're going to get there, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you the next deeper psychological <laughs> yeah. level two question of that. Mm -hmm. How do you find your knowledge of self? Well, your knowledge of self is starting by doing... Ooh. Yeah. What you want to do, and also love yourself. That's I think that's of one course. of the that's the first key mm -hmm. to the whole thing. I've learned that from from my, from our parents. Love yourself. That's the first first thing. Mm -hmm. So m meaning that, you know what to love, whatever. But also what's your negative things? Yeah. Not only the positive things, also the whole thing. The whole thing. So mm -hmm. you know yourself and you love yourself and mm -hmm. be like, I'm not good at that, but I'm good at this. Yeah. To learn that, you need to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Not too much talking, not to read in books, just do shit. See, and, I see, and, I, and be able to be vulnerable, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Right. Like make me, definitely make in mistakes. this industry that we are in, right? Mm -hmm. so, like, see, I, I find yeah. when I talk to a lot of younger people, it's like, their problem is not being able to even figure out how to know themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, of course, you can't answer the rest of the life's problems, you know. And I think part of that oftentimes is because they're, because of social media, internet, they're looking at everyone yeah, yeah. else. Influence. And they're like, yeah. how do I stack up? How do I compare? Yeah, how can yeah, I be like that guy? Yeah. And when we grew up, yeah. we thankfully didn't have that issue. Yeah. We just did us because you couldn't see anything else. Like, yeah. you know, so it's like... It's kind of the gift and the curse, right? Yeah. Because the information is everywhere and it's more about super curation nowadays. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like all this... Really focused. All this information. Yeah. Like, yo, what am I going to do with it? How am I going to channel it? And how am I going to take it and use it as to your advantage? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because mm -hmm. we, or 
you know, we had to look for it a little bit more, maybe, because it wasn't that upfront for you. You had to buy a magazine. You had to, you had to call somebody like, yo, a little bit, a couple of more steps Mm -hmm. to get to the same kind of ground. You know what I mean? So in that sense, it's, 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 it's a different day and age, but. I guess yeah, it's, it's the same it's, in, it's a, in ex- a sense too. Exactly the same. Only yeah. now you have more more stuff to do. So you just need to find out what do I really want to do. Right, right. And now everything is there. Yeah. It's like, okay, you want to do, let's say, a podcast. Google, how do I start a podcast? <laughs> or, you know, there, yeah. is, there is stuff. But if you don't know what to do, if you start looking at different people, like, oh, the grass is green on the other side, shit. Mm-hmm. you're not going to make it because you don't love yourself first what right. do I want to do first mm-hmm. what, what am I good in what am I bad in what do I want to do if you're good let's say in studying math or whatever why don't be a scientist and if you be a scientist why don't I buy a company that produces stuff mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. just do whatever you right. but you need to know first what you want to do so love yourself and then get the knowledge of self and then make it happen it's a real simple thing and now a day and age you can find Everything that you want on the net, man. Like, yeah, and you now can you could also. It. I feel like you could find the living doing almost anything. Anything nowadays. you can make from yeah. your hobby, you can professional make video professional video gamer, and, whatever. Yo, whatever. That's what I'm saying. It's right real. there, yeah. it's real out there. <laughs> you know, that's right. it. Kids need to understand that first to make steps and and, and create your own lane. Yeah, Just trying to be a little bit original. Por right. favor, you know what I'm saying. Like, Know yourself and find what you love. The word important doesn't do this aspect justice. It's actually vital. Put it to you this way, without knowing yourself and knowing what you love, you are actually dying. Some instantly find it, others take years, and many are on a life's journey to constantly search for it. Whatever the case is, just keep moving. Stop measuring against other people's journeys. It's not only a waste of time, but it's also completely irrelevant. It's like asking which of your friends breathes better. Everyone has their own way of doing it. No one is doing it wrong. No one is doing it perfectly right. But everyone is living in their own way. As G, Edson, and I said, the prevalence of social media in the digital age is a gift that gives us more resources and information than we've ever had. But it's also a curse where we now have a window into every single person's world. There are so many options. You actually get paralyzed and end up trying to choose the perfect route. It's that moment when an hour has gone by and you still haven't decided what to watch on Netflix. A past episode with the amazing John Jay, he talked about the need for today's generation to just go out and make mistakes. You don't know who you are until you actually go out there and figure it out. You can research all day, curate all the references, tap into all the right people, but until you go out there and win, lose, or fail, you will never really know who you are. Before we sign off, I do want to ask you one 30,000 foot question on the culture itself. Yes. Sneaker culture, street culture. Because you've been in the game for 15 years now, you've been mm. connoisseurs of it for you know, even longer than that, two decades deep. Where are we now in sneaker culture? Is it, is it hitting a saturation point? Do you think the bubble's about to burst? Do you think we have another light year of mileage to go? Oh, you know what? It's, it's a constantly evol- uh, evolving thing, mm-hmm. right? Like, like music. It's comparable mm-hmm. to all these type of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? So it's not it's essentially better or worse, but it's really different. Yeah. So in that sense, I think we're going a little bit more back to essence. You think like quality, you know what I mean? Okay. Quality, because this day and age, everybody's really starting to be aware of like, what is your attitude to the world, right? Yes. Like sustainability, mm-hmm. all these type of things. Yep. So within now in five years, companies and people that are not thinking about that stuff, is that shit that's going to be done, yeah. you know? Yeah. Because you want to make product, bring it into the world, first of all, it has to be quality so you can use it for for a great time. Mm-hmm. And if you don't want to use it again, then other people have to make use of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. that's the type of stuff and that's the type of thing that I hopefully think are going to be the oh, main yeah. pillars of what this industry is going to be. I think we have to be that way. Of course. Like, so in that, in, that <laughs> sen- in, that sen- in that sense, if that's the type of stuff that we are interested in, mm-hmm. a lot of the standing in line and all that type of stuff is going to be 
a little bit less important, mm-hmm. you know, because you want to buy good stuff. Yeah. You know, so it, I think that's going to that's kind of like change. It's like a cycle. Like G said, it's going to be a cycle. It's going to yeah. be go back to the roots, mm-hmm. sort of saying. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's just, that's, but that's always happens in everything in the whole world. Right. What do you think about um, resale culture? Because you guys are... We are original you, resellers. You you're, you're originally <laughs> resellers, yeah. and now you're making products that other people are reselling. Some of it, yes. And yeah. Some of it, don't. Like, you know, like, <laughs> no. and I don't like, you know, I don't really rate, uh, a lot of people uh, rate product on, on the resale resell value. Work, yeah. Resell value. But yep. to us, as you see, it's, it's a totally different thing mm-hmm. because uh, kangaroos and, and Mephisto are as important as the Amex ones yeah. for that. Exactly. For us, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I guess that essence is actually mm. what it's all about. Yeah, they, they are all to us. They're all the same. Right, right. You know what I mean? So we approach it also. Yeah, the same. You know what I think is actually the most successful releases or collaborations is when you make a product, mm. it sells out, and you can't find it on resale. That Yo, means every kid who bought it is crazy. using yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, using that's the one. Yeah, yeah. That to me is like yeah, the best. yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Dope. we sold out. It's like I can't find it on eBay. Yeah, yeah. Dope. Dope. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> Dope. Dope. Good. So you don't think it's you don't think it's uh it's oversaturated right now? Like, aren't you shocked? Well, sometimes I think like, I think it I think it's 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 it's, it's easy to, to 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 think about those type of things in that sense, like oversaturated, like. I think it's going to be like nature, like natural selection is going yeah. to come out. You know, of course it's oversaturated, <laughs> but but maybe five years ago, a lot of times I also was, it, me myself also mm-hmm. was like, yo, man. Too much shit. Like, I know. 25, like, yo, man. Cut that's it what out I'm to, saying. Cut like, it out to five, we're good. You five know years I mean? ago, I thought we were oversaturated, yeah. but so, now it's like, so it it's, keeps going. Well, it's it, keeps, it keeps on going, but at one point, like people are going to get sick and tired of it. Like, you know, and then you get the cycle back that everybody goes back to their like, oh, let me buy just what I like and wear it. Mm-hmm. Real simple. Yeah. So it will, you know, blow up and do whatever. Right. But we're still there. And that's the whole thing what we said talking in the beginning is the longevity. We always, uh, when we started Pata, we could easily sell like a million Pata script logos mm-hmm. and be millionaires already. Mm-hmm. But we don't know the f- where we're coming from. Like, we don't know exactly the value of money, like when you start. Yeah. So when we started now, it's like, okay, we could start from zero to 10. 10 to a 20, 20 to a 50, 50 to a 100,000. So that's how you can learn and do money stuff. Yeah. And then be like, okay, what do I do? Instead of like going from zero to a million and then buy like chocolate fountains and shit. <laughs> Fuck that. You know, that's not the, that's not the ideal t- the picture. Uh-huh. And that process, we're trying to learn to our uh, people and then they're going to grow up with us. And then we're going to- be smarter, put, yeah. Be smarter. And then we put down a legacy at the end of the day for our people like Amsterdam, Suriname, uh, legacy- in the world mm. and that's for us very important word that's a great way to end it man mm. that's what's up thanks for having us Jeff yeah, man. Yeah, thanks for your time buddy yeah <laughs> shit peace <laughs> yes. hey thanks for listening to this hilarious and insightful episode with the Pata fellas from Amsterdam as always you can find out more about the show and listen to other episodes at hypebeast.com slash radio you can also subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. I personally use Anchor FM. Also, please do me a favor and leave a rating and comment to tell us what you think of the show. Also, tell a friend about the show. Just share it, share it, share it. It definitely helps out a lot. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Jeff Staple. We do occasionally answer listener questions on the show. So if you have a question, shoot it over to me on Twitter. The Business of Hype is created in collaboration with Bright Young Things. You can check out their work at byt.nyc. Our director is Daniel Navetta. Our audio engineer is David Rogers Berry. Our audio interludes are composed by Gabe Darling. Our associate producers are Sydney Pacumpra and Christina Hong. And this episode was recorded on location at the Staple Design Headquarters in beautiful New York City. I'm Jeff Staple, and you've been listening to The Business of Hype on Hype Beast Radio. Thank you.